Hello, my friends. Let's jump right into the recap. This week, there have been several updates where I talked about Russian advances on various parts of the front line. As a result, they've managed to capture another uh, 70 and a half uh, square kilometers. And if we count the gray zone, it's uh, 77.3 square kilometers. While this is less than previous weeks, the Russians are still gradually moving forward. Friends, do you think this advance can ever be stopped? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Uh, now let's talk about the Shalin. In this update, I'd like to focus on the Odessa direction. Over the last few days, the Russians have increased their attacks on Odessa, particularly targeting the port area. Air defense systems have been actively working here. Yesterday, there were reports of significant material damage from drone strikes, showing that they weren't intercepted successfully. There is even, uh, even video evidence of this. But what's really interesting is how the Russians are explaining the situation. They claim that Russian intelligence might have learned about the delivery of long-range missiles to Ukraine, which is why they are now focusing on striking the port area. Of course, no one will confirm such information. It's classified even if something really is being delivered. But the Russians insist that they want to destroy these missiles immediately before Ukraine can use them to strike Russia's rear areas. Clearly, they are very afraid of these attacks. Now let's move uh, to the Kherson direction. The situation here remains stable. Shalin continues on the right bank and there are no new offensive actions on the islands. In the Zaporizhia direction, the Russians uh, continue the offensive actions near Novodanilevka but without any success. Meanwhile, online reports are growing about an impending large-scale Russian offensive in this area. According to Voloshin, a representative of the Southern Defense Forces, Russian forces are preparing new assaults in two directions in the Zaporizhia region. Intelligence indicate that uh, Russian troops are being redeployed to the Orikhov and Robotny areas, with the new attacks likely to intensify in the coming days. Should the Russians break through, they could take control of key logistical routes connecting Zaporizhia with eastern Ukraine, where the defense forces are holding positions in Donetsk and southern part of the Zaporizhia regions. Voloshin also reported that Russian forces launched 400 shallow attacks on civilian settlements in Zaporizhia alone, with an additional 300 targeting Ukrainian military positions. Sadly, this information about the bombardments has been confirmed. Ukrainian armed forces from the front lines are also reporting an increase in Shalin, signaling their potential for further Russian activity in this direction. In the Vuhledar direction, reports continue to surface that after capturing Vuhledar, the Russians will focus on areas around Velika Novosilka. Currently, heavy fighting is ongoing around Bohoyavlanka, with Russian forces making advances toward the outskirts of the settlement. The situation remains extremely difficult. In the Kurahova direction, the Russians continue the assaults near Maximilianivka and fight and persist around Katerinivka. Russian forces are also attempting to expand their control over the fields near the village of Kostantinivka. However, despite these efforts, the front line has remained unchanged over the past day. In the Pokrovsk direction, Ukrainian forces report increasing Russian activity. The assaults near Mirolubivka haven't ceased, and the Russians are now attempting to break through to the village of Promin, which is a serious concern since this is already the outskirts of Mirnohrad. Additionally, attempts to approach uh, Lysivka are ongoing with heavy fighting reported daily. The situation around Selidovan is also very difficult with continuous assaults and shelling. Further south, um, 
so in the areas of Tsukurene, Novoselidivka, Izmailivka, and Hirnik, intense assaults are being recorded. Ukrainian soldiers have reported uh, that uh, Tsukurene is almost entirely under Russian control, with some sources confirming that the settlement has entered the gray zone. Uh, this is particularly concerning as Russian forces have made uh, notable progress in the area. Furthermore, Uh, recent videos show artillery strikes near Kurahivka, indicating that Russian forces have managed to bring the artillery closer to the front lines. This escalation suggests that it will become increasingly difficult to maintain control over the territory especially as the frequency of shelling increases. Previously, FPV drones were primarily used in this area, but now it seems that the artillery presence is uh, growing. Uh, moreover, information is circulating about Ukraine's defensive lines uh, near Pokrovsk. And reports indicate that defensive structures are already being built near the Dnipropetrovsk region. This shows that the seriousness of the situation has been recognized and preparations for the defense of the Dnipropetrovsk region have already begun. Uh, in the Turetsk direction, the Russians continue the assaults uh, within Turetsk itself and are conducting shelling in the area. However, in other nearby settlements, all attacks have ceased and the Russians have been unable to improve their positions. For now, they have begun regrouping their forces. In the Chasivyar direction, Ukrainian forces are also reporting increased Russian activity. The Russians are attempting to storm the city uh, both directly and by stretching their flanks. However, all of these assaults have been repelled by the Ukrainian armed forces and over the past day the front line has remained unchanged. In the Siversk direction, assaults continue on Bilohorivka and Verkhnyokaminsky despite repeated Russian claims that both settlements are under their control, fighting persists in these areas and over the past day the front line has remained unchanged. In the Krimina direction, the Russians are still attempting uh, to break through towards the settlement of Novosadova and are also advancing in the area around Torsk. Despite having tried for over a year, they have yet to make significant progress or reach the water barrier. The front line remains stable with Ukrainian forces successfully holding their defense. In the Borova uh, direction, the Russians continue the assaults on Lozova and are shelling frontline settlements, but they haven't achieved any success. Similarly, a fighting is ongoing further south uh, near Hrekevka and the village of Makivka, but the frontline hasn't changed over the past day. In the Kupinsk direction. The Russians have become significantly more active. There are ongoing battles for Petropavlivka and they are pushing towards um, uh, Kucherivka, which is a troubling development. Additionally, fighting is occurring around Novo Osinovo, Glushkivka and Kruhlekivka. Shalin continues along the entire front line, but no changes have been reported thus far. In the Kharkiv direction, Shalin continues and the Dutch Minister of Defense recently visited the area. He inspected the destruction caused by Russian strikes and announced that the first Dutch uh, F-16s have officially been delivered to Ukraine. Whether this will lead to an improvement in the situation remains uncertain. Meanwhile, Russian forces are attempting assaults near the uh, settlement of Lipci and fighting continues near the village of Staritsa and in Vovchansk. But the front line hasn't changed over the past day. In the Kursk direction, only Shalin is occurring with no large-scale offensive actions from either side, so the front line remains unchanged. And that's all from me. So please, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. 
Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.